Danny is off to meet his father, Tony Dyer, to find out about his paternal line. East Londoners. Proper gazer. Bowie free. Danny Dyer. Old school. That's Good our man. shit. Love you. Pleasure. Hey, hey, watch. Hey, 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 push that one. Look, whip it around. It's called a selfie. Go on, beat him. He's meeting his dad for a pint in an East End pub to see what he knows about his ancestors. Here he is, look, the old man, look. What, son? What, pop? Have a seat down. What do you want? Oh, I'll have that one, then, good. Help. Oh, guess you can't have what the old man's drinking. Right, let's have a look at some of these smudges. Now, that one I remember well, because mm. um, we had that up on our wall. If you, one thing you and mother did get, right, is you got beautiful looking kids, didn't you? That's it. <laughs> got some more here. Yeah, let's have a pipe. All right, have a look at this. Talk. There's it. Man and granddad and me. So there you are, the old man. Look, there's me nan there, Nanny Joyce. Granddad John. With Nanny, what was her parents like? No. I remember my granddad, but uh, not my nan, because obviously she died. She died of her kidney failure. How old was she, nan, when, uh, when her mother died? About nine years old. Nine. Yeah. Never knew it. Never knew it. Yeah. The granny there and auntie Sylvie, they brought my mother up. That was Sylvie, was it? She's beautiful, old Sylvie, look. Absolutely stunning. But Mary Ann, she looks no way. She looks like she can swing a right hand, eh? Oh, not yeah. mine. Yeah. Just this, this is strong face, fascinating boat. This was your great great grandmother, and this is your great 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 grandmother. Great 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 grandmother. On the back, look. 1851. See, I love all this. I love all this. A year ago, son, wasn't it? 1851. Hard face, wasn't it? Re really hard. Albert and Anne Butter Buttervent. The aunt still said they run the workhouse down in Mile End. Them two. They run the workhouse? Mm, that's what I was told. So anything going past Albert and Anne? No, I don't know no further than that. You don't go no further nah. than that? Nah. Nah. This is this is, seems to be the route I'm gonna be going down. Yeah. Albert and Anne Butter Buttervent. Mm. That's near weird, then, isn't it? Mile End. Danny's learnt that his paternal grandmother, Joyce, whose mother, Mary Ann Wallace, died young, was brought up by her grandmother, Mary Ann Buttervent. Danny knows nothing about the Buttervent family, except that his father, Tony, has told him Albert and Anne, his great-great-great-grandparents, ran a workhouse in London's East End. For me dad to tell me about me Nan losing her mum at nine, you know, it's freaked me head out a little bit. I, I, I didn't expect that. You know, I feel for her. I'm also intrigued about the fact that Anne and Albert Buttervant ran a workhouse. That must have been a real tough gig, that one. I think I want to learn a little bit more about that and see where that takes me. Danny's going to the Tower Hamlets archive to meet Professor David Green, who studied the records of the Mile End workhouse. So... Uh, Professor Green. Good name, cool name, that. Pro Green. Pro Green. Um, now, this uh, is a picture of Mary Ann, who's my two times great grandmother, who is the daughter of Anne Buttervant, and this is Albert Buttervant. So I learnt that these two run a workhouse, as far as I know. Okay. I'm going to show you something from the workhouse records. Let's have a look. So, 1878. Yeah, 1878, yeah. December the 2nd. And, and there is Anne Buttervant. So there's Anne. So there's Mary Anne. Who was born in 1877, so just a few months before they were admitted into the workhouse. So she's in there, the mother, with a very, very young baby, Mary Anne, entering the workhouse as a pauper. As a pauper? As a pauper. So she was, so she didn't run the workhouse, she was just in it? That's right. When you start David has scoured the Mile End workhouse records and compiled a list of all the Buttervant family admissions. What about, um, what about Albert? All I'm seeing here, really, is 
Obviously, Marianne and Eliza, Emma, which is obviously her daughters, yeah? That's right. No Albert. No Albert knocking about at all. I think and he comes in, oh, he all right, OK. They don't just go in once. They go in often. That's a kind of three-year period between 1878 and 1881 down here, and they're just in and out the whole time, usually without Albert. And he may be trying to find work outside. This would have been the poorest time of their life because they had three young daughters at least, because we, we see their names here, and he was the only breadwinner. It's either death, really, starved to death, your kids, especially if you've got a baby. They've got no choice at that They've point. They've committed no crime. They committed no crime. Other than being poor, that's their crime, is having no money. So th these are the bare bones of, of the, you know, life in the workhouse, but you get a really great feel if you could see the buildings. The Mile End Hospital next door still uses the old workhouse buildings, where Danny's great-great-grandmother spent most of her childhood. It's incredibly rare to see these buildings uh, still, still standing, and your, uh, your relative, Mary Ann Buttonman, when she was a baby, uh, this is where she would have uh, been. That's the front. Oh, yeah. And you can see it's actually not changed very much. Well, that looks quite grand. Yeah. You know, it's a hellhole. So, Mary Ann Buttervant, very little education, no connections. Yep. So, coming out of the workhouse, I don't know where your story is going to go from here, but too often these people fell foul of the law. Um, it might be a really good idea, perhaps, to, to look at the police records to see if they picked her up. Yeah. It's a strange feeling to think that. Uh... That's the actual building. Mary Ann, Anne and Albert actually knocked about in. 